our sister Pam, will you assume the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Osiris? Here. Commissioner Keach? Here. Administrator Jones? Here. Commissioner Osias noted yesterday afternoon that we had planned to have a hearing on the on the uh, SARC uh, Opportunity Fund discussion, and if we were going to make that date, we had to bring the call this week. So we're offering up as a, a possibility in addition of as item 3D a notice of hearing to be held March 29th at 10:30 a.m. Move to amend the agenda. Yeah, second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carry. Public comment. Any member of the public wishing to make comment on agenda items only? Yes, sir. Was this public comment? Yeah, come on up. State your name and address. Sure. Public comment for agenda items. items to report on this week. On Sunday afternoon, I attended the uh, Clallam Transit's annual employee recognition dinner, uh, which was uh, an excellent event, and uh, they really highlight the transit organization's commitment to safety. And uh, we have one particularly talented Clallam Transit bus driver who uh, will be representing Clallam Transit at the National Bus Rodeo uh, coming up in the next couple of months. So uh, we've got a, a hometown hero to root for. Uh, and a non-official assignment uh, that I have is uh, I'm a board member of the Olympic View Community Foundation, which is based in Squim, but is looking to reach out to other parts of, of the county. Uh, last Wednesday, I had the opportunity to go out to Nia Bay and, uh, and as, as a member of that organization and uh, visit the museum out in Nia Bay, where I have not been. Uh, I have not been to that museum for 20 years, and I would just highly encourage anyone who has not been there recently to get their butts out there and check it out, uh, because 
it's really phenomenal, and uh, and it was a it was a reminder to me of what a what a valuable and unusual resource that is. So I would encourage all of you to stop in the next time you're in Nia Bay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Nothing from any contractual agreements. Item 2A is a waiver of bid requirement and consideration of agreement with PacWest Machinery for the purchase of two used pneumatic tire compactors, all as was discussed in work session back on March 7th, total cost $108,725.20 for uh, two units, total for two units. Move to approve the waiver. Second. Move to second it. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Item 2B is an agreement with Michael and Susan Bonamo for purchase of easement for the Carlsberg sewer project as was discussed in work session on March 7th, total cost $500 and a hookup to the sewer. Move to approve the agreement. And second. And second in. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. And motion carries. Administration. Item 3A is a resolution calling for a hearing to be held at 10.30 a.m. on March 29th uh, regarding the proposed amendments to the Comprehensive Park and Recreation Master Plan 2016 to 2026, all as was discussed in work session on March 7th. Move to approve the resolution. I second. We'll get seconded. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And item 3B is a notice of hearing to be held at 10.30 a.m. March 29th regarding the request from the Park and Recreation District 1 for Natatorium Air Handling Unit Emergency Replacement Unit at the Swim Aquatic and Recreation Center, as was discussed in the work session back in February. Move to approve the notice of hearing. I second. Move and second it. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Budget. Item 4A is approval of budget modifications for the week of February 29th. Move to approve budget modifications for the week of February 29th. Second. Let's move to and second. It. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Item 4B is a notice that the following supplemental appropriations will be adopted by resolution on March 29th under Health and Human Services funding from the Washington State Department of Health for immunization program. New revenue of $1,888. Under Health and Human Services Environmental Health, grant funding from the Washington State Department of Health for Pollution ID and Correction, new revenue of $7,815. And under and grant funding from the Washington State Department of Health for On-Site Septic System Management Program, new funding of $68,220. Under Health and Human Services Operations, Funding from the Washington State Department of Health for the Women, Infants, and Children Program, new funding of $6,850. Under Sheriff's Operations, Operation Stone Garden Grant Reimbursement, new funding of $2,744. Reimbursement from the Olympic Peninsula Safety Communications Alliance Network Operations Budget for full-time radio technician position, new funding of $46,500. And finally, under WSU Extension, funding from Solid Waste Division of Health and Human Services for Managing a Department of Ecology grant, new funding of $50,603. These are the supplemental appropriations. Move to approve the notice of the supplemental appropriations. I second. Move to second it. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Item 4C is a resolution calling for a hearing to be held at 10.30 a.m. March 29th for consideration of the following debatable emergencies. Under Sheriff's Operations, payment to equipment rental and revolving to replace the Sheriff's Office patrol vehicle that was totaled in the 2015 accident, $7,500. Under Sheriff's Jail Medical, to fund increased cost of inmate medical services in the amount of $6,541. Under Health and Human Services Homelessness Task Force, the 2015 unspent funds of $220,000. And under Olympic Peninsula Safety Communications Alliance Network Operations to fund a full-time radio technician position in the amount of $46,500. Move to approve the resolution calling for a hearing. Second. Move to second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Open meeting boards, no committee development, no public works. We have two public hearings in 20 minutes, so at this time, is there any member of the public wishing just to make general comment to the board? This would be the time. Do you run? And anybody else? On anything? Any topic? Let us have it.
I agree with what Ron just said. So it ebbs and flows and it all comes out in the wash. So I think we can have Jim take a look at that as the bids come in and ask him that question. I think the appropriate place would be, as Ron suggested, either we create an ordinance uh, imposing um, rules of behavior we want to see and then incorporate that into the contract, or just simply whoever does get our new bid, as, as the commissioners expressed an interest, they'd really like it to be one primary person. Uh, you know, talk to them informally, so we can certainly look at either of those cases. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Good point. Thank you very much. We'll take a look at those policies and see if that does limit this. <laughs> yeah, so we'll take a look at it. And the one thing you can do is when you meet with the people that bid, you yeah. look at it, just give them a copy of the policy. Absolutely. And see, what, see what it says. Mr. Wilson. Good morning, gentlemen. Dale Wilson, uh, Mid Port Angeles. Uh, this is in uh, reference to the uh, impending Carlsberg sewer project. Uh, I have not looked at the plans in, in great detail, but I have noticed some uh, suggested additions that you might want to put into the budget, and that would include our hydrologist to study the effects of possible sewer pipes bursting as they cross the Dungeness River and give you an idea of what the cost of the cleanup would be if we did have that new uh, and expected earthquake that's about 65 years over here right now. So if we do uh, have a pipe break and uh, dump all that sewage into the Dungeons River, I think we need a hydrologist to uh, report on the possible effects and cleanup costs. Um, perhaps you might want to consider a paleogeologist in case they run into another mammoth out there in that area and imagine how long that would hold up the uh, the project, if there was uh, thought of um, a mammoth or other paleological finds, uh, and an archaeologist, uh, in case you find graves out there, of course, you know, there are, uh, there's a history of that when we found the uh, ancient uh, graveyard down here at the graveyard, and that created quite enough people in the community, so you might want to uh, consider having somebody on hand to, uh, you know, they might find the bones of somebody that was a murder victim, but they also might find an ancient burial ground which would create some uh, delay in the project and also uh, create some added expense. Um, also, uh, you might want to consider money for downtime if the project is stopped for any of these occasions. And uh, finally, I'd like to uh, suggest that uh, the county employ an outside project manager for a couple of reasons. Number one, they will have the expertise for such a project as this. They will have errors and emissions insurance to cover any problems. And the other thing is, if there are problems that occur and we are managing it in-house, then uh, if, it, if we uncover an error or design or something, they might want to cover each other's behinds, and you may not get all the information back that you need. So if we have an outside project manager, not only will they have the expertise to cover a, a project of this size, but they'll also have errors and emissions insurance, which would put any cost overruns or any problems on the backs of the contractor and the project manager. And any other way that you do that is going to put any errors and omissions and additional cost overruns on the back of the taxpayers. And I think we all want to avoid that. Thank you. Anybody else wish to make general comment before the board? If not, then uh, about 10 minutes before the public hearing. So if there's no objection, we'll take a recess for 10 minutes. <laughs> Back are two public hearings. One is a declaring vehicles in the sheriff's office as surplus, and another is a proposed amendment to the Cloudy County Code, Chapter 23.03. So, 10 minute recess. Okay. Okay. We'll uh, come back into session. We have two public hearings. The first is a consideration of a resolution declaring vehicles in the sheriff's office as surplus and ordering their sale at public auction. So, Representative of the sheriff's office is here. Alice, do you have anything? Uh, do I add? No. No? That's it? That's your staff report? <laughs> we actually worked such as this already, so. Are there any questions of Alice before we open the public hearing? <coughs> no objection. We'll open the public hearing. There's nobody signed up. Is there any member of the public wishing to make comment regarding the declaring the vehicles in the sheriff's office as surplus and ordering their sale at a public auction? Seeing no one rushing to the microphone. The board's wishes. Move to close the public hearing. Second. So moved and seconded. Just for the record, I'll enter, let's, uh, enter the vehicles into question. 
1990 Toyota pickup, 2000 Ford Expedition, and a 1977 Chevrolet Ambulance came to be declared a surplus and sold at public auction. I suspect a 77 Chevrolet Ambulance would be a hot item. <laughs> So it's moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. A motion to approve the resolution. I move to approve the resolution authorizing the sheriff's office to dispose of the surplus vehicles by sale at public auction. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, minimum bid will be $500. I certainly hope you get a $500 bid for the other two certainly will be paid. Uh, it's moved and seconded to accept the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Thank you very much. Just curious, how did the sheriff's office come in contact with a 1977 ambulance? I do not know how <coughs> that thing came into our possession. It was first used for search and rescue. It's been sitting up at the shop for a very, very long time. So, so somebody wants it for 500. Next, we have a public hearing on a consideration of proposed amendments to Cloudland County Code, Chapter 23.03, General Park and Fairground Rules and Regulations. And we did work session this a couple weeks ago, Bruce, but do you have anything else you want to add before we open the public hearing? I have a brief staff report. Oh, just some Bruce would do I'm sorry. <laughs> We got lots going on, so we're giving out responsibility yeah. right now. <laughs> Joel, do you have it? I do, actually. Right? Okay. Um, just a brief one. Uh, the purpose of the proposed ordinance revision is to update several areas of the Collins County Code, Chapter 2303, uh, which pertain to specifically our parks and recreation master plan and fairgrounds master plan. And it addresses issues that have to date in. One of the main things it does addresses a couple of the issues that have been rather vague. We want to clarify those a little bit. And both of these were made through the Department of uh, Fair Advisory Board. First is under Section 1, um, subsection 020, under definitions, we are adding uh, Thompson Road and Eagle Point properties, as those are uh, recent acquisitions. And we're going to remove uh, under H, Jesse Cook Scriven County Park. Which is under the purview of the road department. Section 2, subsection 040 under camping, we're going to add occupancy of the campsite for overnight camping or temporary purposes, i.e., electric vehicle charging, picnicking, and resting shall require the visitor to pay an appropriate camping fee. Issue there was we had people pulling into camping spots and they weren't paid for it, people would come to rent those spots and there were issues trying to find people to get their vehicles out. Um, uh, next would be to, under number five, remove the first sentence in its entirety and add to sentence number eight, see below for exceptions, and then we're adding uh, under B, Thompson Road and Eagle Point, and under H, remove Jesse Cook Scriven for consistency. Section 3070. Uh, dogs, cats, and other pets and livestock. We're going to revise that heading to read generally animals, or quote animals, uh, to clean that up a little bit. Um, under number three, we're going to add on all park lands with the exception of designated areas within Robin Hill Farm, County Park, and Clown County Fairgrounds. Uh, under number six, we're going to add in, in its entirety, no person shall intentionally be attracted or artificially sustain wildlife in Clown County Park lands. The feeding of indigenous wildlife is prohibited in all Clown County Park lands unless otherwise posted. Under section four, I'm just I'm hitting the highlights. There are other minor changes in this, but under section four, uh, we're going to add under E, horses shall be led with the use of a halter from the horse barn to the Horses and horseback riding are not permitted in any other area of the fairground. Uh, we're going to remove under number two, riders shall ride their horse at a walking gate only and add to number two. While on county approved horse trails, riders shall slow their horses to a walk upon meeting other trail users. No galloping, racing, or jumping allowed on these same trails. And also under number two, at the fairgrounds, riders shall ride the horses at a speed and safety level appropriate for events taking place inside the arenas. Outside the arenas, riders shall maintain a walking gait at all times. And this is obviously issue of safety related issues from a couple of incidents. 
Section 5, uh, just minor things there, the addition of Thompson Road for uh, metal detection, and finally under uh, Section 6, subsection 140. <clears throat> Going to add number, under number three, planting any vegetation in parklands without a prior approval of the department is prohibited and subject to immediate removal by the department. The only other modifications, as I stated earlier, were those uh, in the ordinance were pertaining to formatting and numbering and word changes and that sort of thing. So they were fairly minor. We did on uh, earlier receive one comment and did you give them a copy of that? We received one comment pertaining to one of the revisions that we uh, suggested under Section 4. And Bruce has a copy of that for each of you in our proposed revised wording. <coughs> and the comment reads as follows. The ordinance on the park rules has some problems with Section 4, subsection 120 under E. Horses are laid with a bridle, not a halter, while showing at the fairgrounds between classes Halter, and his comment is the halter would be on from the horse that's unsaddled or in a halter class. The easiest way to fix that would be to add the word or bridle after halter. The other issue is that the ordinance would eliminate the pony ride because the animals are moved through prohibited areas and the ride itself is uh, in a non horse permitted area. So, our proposed uh, revision to our earlier proposed revision would state uh, horseback riding is permitted at the fairgrounds only in warm-up only in warm-up arena horse show arena grandstand arena the road between the horse show and grandstand arenas and the arena between the warm-up and horse show arenas horses shall be led with the use of a halter or bridle from the horse barns to the arenas horses and horseback riding are from, are not permitted in any other areas of the fairgrounds unless authorized in advance by the fair manager or the director and in summary, we would uh, recommend that the board approve the proposed modifications, which includes uh, Mr. Tate's comment uh, to Climb Tank Code Chapter 2303, barring any revisions that might come up as a result of this hearing. Thank you. Any questions for Joel or Bruce? There's no questions. If there's no objection, we'll open the public hearing. Anybody has uh, signed up to testify? Is there any member of the public wishing to make comment regarding this public hearing on this ordinance change? Yep, Ed, point up. <clears throat> I didn't see your list over there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's That's right. Right. And I didn't see your hand. Good morning, Commissioner. Ted Bowen, Peter Boxel, and McClellan Bay. Regarding this ordinance, when I was following this through its process, I understood. It was about that planting stuff in the park and also the, the wildlife. But then now seeing this product, I see a lot of loose ends. And actually it brings the question, why aren't we even actually making some changes to other parts of the ordinance? So that's what I wanted to go over today. I am pleased to see that Eagle Point property is included in the ordinance. That's pretty quick updating of the ordinance. I do have a concern with section two, section point zero four zero campaign. In regards to the chain under super slipper subsection 4, occupancy of campsite. I understand his explanation, but you know, what's going to be the definition here of resting? Is somebody going to pull into that spot and they didn't pay a fee, and 10 minutes later they get nailed for a violation of the ordinance? This creates a real interesting dilemma on the citizens' use of the county parks, uh, especially using that term resting. I can understand vehicle charging and picnicking because those are a little bit longer term, but resting, I mean, I myself use uh, Pillar Point for resting in a sense, driving all the way in. It's a nice break just to stop there and get out and uh, catch your breath. So I think this creates uh, a very ambiguous use of that term resting, and I object to that. With that though said, moving over, I would ask that under the Pillar Point County Park, under page three there, where it's prohibited uh, overnight camping. You know, we really need to address Pillar Point, because it is a camping, a developed campsite, and it hasn't been that way for a while, and we've had some problems there with other entities utilizing that facility. Uh, Quasi, I've talked to the parks folks about this, and we, we need to get Pillar Point back into play, and I think that needs to be addressed. I think this should be updated uh, and 
off-season special use permit. I don't know what a member of the public is going to understand that to mean. Moving over to page four, no person shall intentionally feed or track number six there under three. So this brings up another interesting dilemma about the young, young child that accidentally throws some uh, breadcrumbs out there on the ground. And I know we look at that as trivial, but I see this happen all the time with uh, passing regulations prohibiting. And a grand example is a very young child that decided to surf cast off of uh, the beach there between Clallam Bay and CQ and managed to wheel in a 25 pound king through the kelp bed. Got him on shore and Fish and Wildlife shows up and nails the young man. They, you know, they use reason, they release the fish and got it. But this is, I see this all the time with young children they don't know the regulation. And what are we going to get into here, putting these prohibitions in place, somebody throwing out breadcrumbs or something? And, and it just creates that, that aura of, wow, what is reasonable, okay? And, and lastly but not least is on page five there. Um, let's see. Oh, under section five, section 121 point. And the coinage thing. This is really interesting. Why isn't Eagle Point included in a list to obtain a permit to do coinage? I'm kind of curious why that didn't get included in that list. So those are my comments. And um, thank you. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Anybody else wish to make a comment for the board? Any comments, Joel? I, I do. Um, first one pertaining to the resting, the word resting at Salt Creek. And Mr. Bowen, Bowen uh, used Pillow Point as an example. First off, South Salt Creek is a campground. The sites we're specifically talking about are paid camp, camping RV or tent sites. Uh, we have acres and acres of day use parking at Salt Creek. so. I don't, I don't really see that as, a, as an issue there. Uh, Total Point, on the other hand, is a day use facility, with the exception of, as I spoke about, uh, off season camping, which we did have, and which uh, several county residents use during the off season. The other thing is that, is that as of about four years ago, or five years ago now, the, our park managers can no longer uh, issue citations. We can't take anybody. What we have to do if we have an issue is contact the sheriff's department, and they are the ones that arrive on site and do that. Typically, an instance like this would not require us to call the sheriff's department. So, we, our park manager is very, very good at uh, communicating and working with people. Um, and these kind of issues are, with a with the rare exception, they're uh, worked out right there on site. But as I stated, uh, it's important to us that if someone has reserved the site, is coming to the site expecting it to be open, they don't need to come up and see that someone's uh, charging their electric car and they've gone on a hike up to strike the peak, which occurs. So, and that's a whole other issue that we have to deal with in trying to keep people, um, you know, give, them, give them what they expected when they got there. Um, I mentioned to the point off season camping. Uh, the feeding, we've had issues with folks, and I understand about um, Mr. Bowman's concern about children feeding, you know, the breadcrumbs and that sort of thing. I, we understand that that happens. Our issue was with people specifically bringing uh, bags of peanuts. Uh, we have people that bring seeds into the parks and they scatter them for the wildlife. Well, we get noxious weeds from the seeds and the wildflowers. The, the feeding of squirrels, in particular at Robin Hill, was where the issue originated. Um, it, it causes a lot of difficulties with park users by, by attracting different types of, of wildlife. And that was specifically what the reason was for. I know people go, for example, to Dungeness Landing and they'll bring a loaf of bread with them and throw it to the seagulls. I mean, we're not going to stop all that. We're not trying to. What we don't want people doing is bringing the things that are invasive into the park lands. That's, that's that's the specific thing. And as far as, as, far as uh, enforcing that regulation, we don't have, at our day use facilities, we don't have someone there that's going to be ticketing or citing uh, somebody for being um, 
Um, and with regards to uh, including people point on the metal detection, I guess it could be included. Um, our thought, I think, was that we just, given the nature of that site, uh, the location of that site, didn't feel, I mean, it certainly can be done, but I don't see the reason for it. There's no, I don't know, maybe you have a better reason for including it or not including it. I just, no, it just, there has been no past use. I don't know what they, <coughs> that anybody would find anything at that site. Yeah. I mean, if that was something that you, Felt should be included. I mean, we, we can't speak directly as to it shouldn't occur, but we didn't even see a reason why it should. Any other questions? Okay. So, motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. I move to approve the proposed amendments to Clallam County Code 23.03. I second. It also includes the uh, comment with regard to horseback section E. Uh, and that was my intent. Yeah. The, the, so let me revise my motion perhaps. Um, I'd like to move to approve the proposed amendments including uh, revision. Let's see. What section is this? Horseback riding. Uh, section 120 uh, 1E. Second. Second is uh, any further questions or comments? <coughs> Is I think it's uh, it's pretty traditional. If you're a parent, you're in a park, and a deer or a raccoon or a squirrel walks by, and you have your kid throw a tiny little piece of the sandwich might be eaten. I certainly hope the intent of the rule is to not to avoid that. I think that's something that every parent shares a special moment in sharing with their kids their love of wildlife and the outdoors. And I don't think the air and corner of a sandwich from a two-year-old to a deer or a raccoon or a squirrel is probably going to lead to overpopulation. So I hope that you mostly focus on maybe spreading of food, large amounts, but if you, one of your rangers sees a kid throwing part of their potato chips or lunch, we, we all know, we all know we're not supposed to do it. There's signs in every park, but honestly, <laughs> show me a parent that hasn't experienced that moment with their kid. And I'll probably show you a parent that never took their kid to the out, outer doors. So. That's my comment on that. I, I don't want to see the county somehow regulate <clears throat> that moment. Because yes. that was a special moment that I shared with my kids. Certainly understood the rules. You don't want that good grief when your two-year-old says, Dad, can I throw my little piece of sandwich at the raccoon? My dad's going to say no. No, you can't. Rules say. That was never the intent. It was, this was specifically to address uh, one major issue we have with people actually literally bringing bags and stuff. And that, that's a different, that's one other ball of wax. So. Truth be told, I would probably still do it myself every now and then. So. Uh, it's moved and seconded. Uh, any further comments, questions? My thanks to the committee that worked on this. That's all. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, good point was raised, I think, for Commissioner Peach and you guys, Pillar Point, a jewel, a gem that was somewhat underutilized because of the lack of services, and I know that's been an issue for many, many years, but uh, if the District 3 Commissioner someday wants to take that project on, I think the county would be well served to figure out a way to utilize that park in a, in a better area, in a better way. But, but the water system was the main reason for it. Service. But there's kind of a lack of the fishing because it's in the, in the good old days, you know, when fishing was just boom around here, um, that place was packed and used. It, it was just crazy. And we had a seasonal worker that would come out there and work. So a lot of things have changed since then, as you obviously know. But Some things would be worth it, though. I mean, a water system can be repaired and replaced. It just takes money and permitting, but that, 
I think there's a lot of people nowadays that would love to camp there, still launch their boats, still use that water access, mm -hmm. and would camp overnight. And it's, to me, it's just been kind of underutilized for years, but it's not my history. Great place for crowd. Oh, yeah, I got that much there. I think that raises a good point. That should probably be looked at again. Yeah. What, what could we do there? Because that's just a phenomenal, phenomenal location. Every time I drive in there, there's nobody there. That's an office like. Food for thought. That, that's up to Bill if he wants to work with you guys. <coughs> uh, any other public comment? Ed? If you'd like a lawyer, you get paid by the words. Hey, Ed Bowen, PO Box 111. So, on the 7th of March, you held a work session regarding the Veterans Relief Fund ordinance. So, I've studied that a little bit, and um, there are a few reservations I have about this. I need to go back a little bit. There's only one commissioner still on the board that addressed the ordinance about changing it over a while back, and I have reservations then because. The Veterans Relief Fund itself is, is controlled by the RCW, and I brought up to that at that point the fact that the organization outside the county that manages this uh, needs to be bonded, and that was never addressed during that process. So I put that back on the record today as we move forward and we give more um, oversight and all to that organization. I do believe the intent of the RCW needs to be upheld, and it least to address this accountability issue, they should be bonded. Uh, I've been a little bit of embarrassed by the process so far, even with this ordinance change, that uh, I still don't believe we have a veteran at large or a veteran's representative at large on that board, on that committee, um, because the committee's not transparent on the, on the county's website. It's a standalone function. Uh, the records are not online like any other committee with the county, so I have reservations there. And there are some particular aspects within the ordinance change that I'm going to have some concerns with. And one is particularly the right and the ability and the method that a veteran who applies for the Veterans Relief Fund appeals a no decision. I think there's some significant flaws in this ordinance change proposal that I'm going to be looking into very closely because I think it sets veterans up for lack of due process, I would call it. Thank you. Anybody else wish to make a comment? Seeing no one, uh, no executive session. Board sits as the Board of Health with the Board of Health this afternoon at 1.30. So if there's nothing else before the Board, we'll uh, end the meeting at 1.30 on the Board of Health. 1 o'clock, two more Board Commissioners will be on the KOMP radio show and we'll continue this week. This week's meeting to next Monday morning at 9 a.m. There's no objection. Objection. Thanks. Uh, would our assessor Pam lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Osiris? Here. Mr. Keach? Here. Administrator Jones? Here. Commissioner Zayas noted yesterday afternoon that we had planned to have a hearing on the on the uh, SARC uh, Opportunity Fund discussion, and if we were going to make that date, we had to bring the call this week. So we're offering up as a, a possibility in addition of as item 3D a notice of hearing to be held March 29th at 10:30 a.m. Program. And that will be effective at the end of this year. And the real concern was that this took place at meetings that were um, literally way, way far away from the Olympic Peninsula. Very few people had a chance to engage. Very few people were informed about it. And what would likely occur is uh, an additional meeting. The City of Forks who sponsored this is quite interested in looking at a mechanism where the minimum those kind of meetings occur in Forks. Just uh, at least listen and understand. 
I've got two items to report on this week. On Sunday afternoon, I attended the uh, Clallam Transit's annual employee recognition dinner, uh, which was uh, an excellent event, and uh, they really highlight the transit organization's commitment to safety. And uh, we have one particularly talented Clallam. Move to amend the agenda. Yeah, second.